Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fully Charged Show. Now, today I'm going to be driving this car. This is the Ford Mustang mach -E. It's been out a while. I've seen a load of them on the road. They're really nice cars to drive. I've been in this car a lot recently. I'm not going to quite say I've been driving it that much. That's what this episode is about. We know all about the basics of this car. This is something extra. Anyway, that is the Ford Mustang mach -E, and this is the Fully Charged Show. If you like the Fully Charged Show, then you'll love our live events. Next up, we're in Amsterdam for Fully Charged Live Europe on the 24th, 25th and 26th of November. Get your tickets today. The Ford Mustang Mach-E with Blue Cruise. So we have reviewed this car before and, uh, and uh, um, I was very, I do remember being very impressed with that. I'd kind of forgotten because it was such a long time ago we first drove it. And when this got delivered this time, I went, oh, that is nice. It's a really lovely car to drive. That is irrelevant, really. That's not what this episode is about. This episode is about this newly introduced system that Ford have introduced called Blue Cruise, which is available on this vehicle. It doesn't come with it automatically. You have to pay a monthly subscription to use it. The technology is built into the car. And so what that means is in the UK, and certainly in the United States, in certain areas, I know it's the, the same case, it is legal to drive the vehicle. <laughs> I'm just going to get in front of this camper van. It is completely legal to drive the vehicle without holding the steering wheel. Uh, that is now, it just took over then. So I'd set the cruise control for 70 miles an hour, which is the speed limit in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And so uh, the car won't do more than 70, no matter what is happening. But what it's doing now, I'm following another vehicle in front of me and it, we're doing 56 miles an hour, uh, nearly 57. And so that, that's, I don't have to do anything. My feet aren't on the pedals. My hands are on the steering wheel. And it, the, I think the critically important thing is this is legal. I am legally allowed to do this. How this is described, this technology is hands off, eyes on. So you do have to keep looking at the road. And what's really interesting is you kind of do naturally. I don't want to look anywhere else. I want to make sure that I can see the cars that are coming. I can see what's behind me. I can see what's in front of me. I'm very aware of the surroundings while, I, while the car drives itself. And if I don't look at it, if I look over at you for a long time, we'll hear something soon. <laughs> there, there you go. Watch the road. You might not have heard that, but it's going blub, blub. There's an infrared camera looking at me there, and that is watching where my eyes are looking and what my eyes are doing. So what happens then if you're stuck behind slow moving traffic on a motorway? This motorway highway is really busy because it's the holiday season. So there's hundreds of cars and caravans and campers and people with car loads of stuff with their kids going on holiday. Uh, and so it's a really busy, slow moving motorway. I mean, I've, I've not got anywhere near 70 miles an hour yet and I'm keep, just keeping up with the traffic as usual. But what happens is if I indicate I have to take over control of the car. So if I indicate to change lanes, um, which I'll do right now. So I'm now steering the car. That's me doing that. And the car accelerates because there's more room on here. But I now have to wait. I'm holding the steering wheel. Now it's taken back over. So I have to do nothing. There's no other buttons to press. Literally, to use uh, Blue Cruise hands-free, eyes-on technology, you literally press one button once at the start of the journey and it does everything for you. So if I now indicate again, pull back into the middle lane, uh, the same thing will happen. I will have to take over. I'm taking over now. I'm pulling slightly over very gently. I'm pulling up behind the vehicle in front. I'm slowing down again and hands free comes back on. So the other thing, ah, the other thing that I really liked, and I'm going to check the prices of this, but the other thing I really liked is that if you've got a Ford Mustang Mach-E and you're driving it day to day, going to the shops, going to schools, going to your work, blah, 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 you don't need this. It's pointless and you're paying a monthly subscription for it. You don't need Blue Cruise unless you're doing a long drive. You can't use it anywhere on roads other than motorways like this. Motorways with a solid uh, reservation in the middle, you know, a solid barrier in the center of the road. So, and I've seen the map that uh, you can use Blue Cruise on and it's all the motorways or highways, if you want to call them that, 
or auto routes or auto barns. It's, it's, it's that, that network in the UK, you can use it anywhere on that network. But if you, as soon as you turn off the road, you take turn off the motorway on a normal road, even on a dual carriageway, it won't work. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't come on. You haven't got any choice of when to make it come on. It comes on when it knows it can come on. So you're paying for that every month, a monthly subscription, quite a substantial one. And you go, well, I don't need it. I'm not going to use it for you know six weeks. What's the point of paying for it? Well, the point is you don't have to. So you can pay for it for a month when you go on holiday and suddenly you've got this extra facility in the car and you're doing a really long drive with the kids and loads of stuff in the back and it makes it really easy. Here's the thing about this. Is it worth it? Does it make a difference? Well, I've now done three fairly long journeys using it and I got used to it in literally minutes that it became completely uh, acceptable what I was doing. It didn't make me nervous. I wasn't going <laughs> like the very first time you think, oh God, it's, there's a bit of a bend coming up. It's not going to do it. It keeps itself absolutely spot on in the middle of the lane at all times. It is really smooth. It doesn't jerk about. It's not hesitating. I'm going to change lanes again. It's slightly, I must admit, here's the one thing when I find it slightly alarming is when it knows the lane is clear ahead and it starts to accelerate, it accelerates with some aggression. So you kind of go, oh, are you sure? <laughs> uh, but you do get used to it really quickly and it is more relaxing on a long drive, not having to steer all the time and yet being aware of the traffic around you. So I'm not going to lie, I was kind of cynical about a self-driving car when I first got this. I just went, What's, what is the point? I was a little bit moody about it and I was just going, this is just silly. It's an extra expense. It's a lot of extra you know, hardware and software that the car needs to do it. And then after driving it for quite a long way, it's kind of brilliant. What I've learned today is when we were cruising along the motorway, it was absolutely fine. It was in control. It was no problem at all. You know, when you change lanes, you've got to indicate and then you do take over, but it comes back on so smoothly. It takes over like a ghost. It's incredible. And then we got stuck in horrendous traffic jams and it still managed. It wasn't having any problem. And it was really interesting because I'd never done this before. We went from one motorway to another one. So with like a highway junction with a big sweepy road and it was absolutely fine. It didn't have any problem following the sat nav. It was just following it absolutely perfectly. And then when it came to the next junction where I had to join the other motorway, it went <laughs> And so it then tells you to take over, which I was ready to do anyway. So it doesn't, it really does just work on the motorway slash highway slash auto route slash autobahn. That's where it works. Doesn't work anywhere else. But when it works, it's really, really good. Anyway, uh, that's, that's all. Because um, there's a very noisy mower coming up in. It should be electric, but it's still got a combustion engine. So before the whole world goes electric, Here's me in Bristol with the Mustang Mackie with Blue Cruise saying, if you have been, thank you for watching. Support our Stop Burning Stuff Patreon and help us tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy.